Hi class, so today's presentation is going to be based on your reading for today, which is Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists by Linda Nochlin, written in 1971. So this essay tends to make a lot of people really angry, including myself, uh, the first few times I read it, because we instantly want to say, of course this isn't true, there have been great women artists, and just kind of throw it out, right? But what's really important to note is that Linda Nochlin is a feminist art historian, and she absolutely believes that women are capable of greatness. So when she says in the first paragraph um, that there have been no great women artists because women are incapable of greatness, she's proposing a false truth, right? She's saying that is not the conclusion we should come to. And what she does in her essay is explain why women have been unable to achieve greatness in art, even though they are so clearly capable of it. Right? And she explains that it's men throughout history who have been taught and celebrated and valued in the arts, and not women. So she also says that we shouldn't go back in history and pull up examples of underappreciated female artists. Because in reality, um, if you were to ask just any person off the street, or maybe any of you before you took this class, who are the greatest artists of all time, everybody's going to say... Leonardo da Vinci, Jackson Pollock, Picasso, um, Van Gogh, right? And if you ask them if they even know of a single female artist, they might not be able to come up with one at all. And maybe if they can, it's going to be Frida Kahlo or George O'Keefe, and that's it, right? So <clears throat> there's also these different understandings of what greatness is, and so you really have to be able to define greatness for yourself when you're reading this essay. So for our purposes and for Nochlin's purposes, she's saying that that kind of recognition and that knowledge in the art world and in you know just larger society, that's what greatness is, being a household name, right? Also money, right? So later on in the presentation, I'm gonna go through some statistics and talk about the pay gap in the art world. So I do think that the pay gap is another really great indication that women have been underappreciated in the art world throughout history and still today. Um, but there are definitely many other understandings of greatness, and so I just encourage you to kind of come up with your own as well. So in this presentation, I am going to kind of do what Nachlin says not to do, which is that I'm going to go back in history to some of the earliest art that I've shown you guys so far in this class, to some really great examples of female artists who have been underappreciated, because I actually do think that there's a lot of value in that. Um, so I just want to mention one artist specifically, Artemisia Gentileschi. She's a late Baroque painter, and I want to tell you a little bit about her story. So her father, um, Orazio, was a late Renaissance painter, and he taught her to paint, and then eventually also hired this man, Agostino Tassi, another painter, to continue her education. Tassi ended up raping Artemisia when she was about 17 or 18 years old, and long story short, you know, they had kind of arranged a marriage between the two of them, but when Artemisia's father realized Tassie was never planning to marry Artemisia and was actually planning to steal some of Orazio's paintings, Orazio helped Artemisia take Tassie to court for rape. Um, and so this trial was extremely traumatic for Artemisia. She was tortured on the stand with thumbscrews which almost robbed her of abil her ability to paint because it damaged her fingers so so badly. Tassie was not tortured um, in court, and Artemisia was even given a pelvic examination in the courtroom with only a thin piece of cloth separating her from the public. Tassie was found guilty, however his sentence was never carried out. So Artemisia did move on from that. She entered a marriage of convenience and then moved to Florence, where she earned the patronage of the Medici family. Um, she's most known for her biblical paintings, telling stories, celebrating strong women, and also for her ability to paint the nude female body better than anyone at that time. Um, and then... Her work after her death, even though she rose to the highest success during her lifetime, her work fell into obscurity after her death and was even constantly misattributed um, to different male artists like Caravaggio or her father or their followers. And this was exampled only this year, 2020, 
when one of her paintings was discovered, um, a painting of David, David and Goliath, which was previously attributed to one of her father's students. And during a cleaning of the painting, her name was discovered in the sword. So this just really tells us how little we know truly about art history and how much we're constantly going to be updating and learning things as we really go back and rewrite that history more accurately. So for your question of the day today, um, I proposed a series of questions um, early in the, in the lecture, and then I repeat them again at the question of the day slide. Questions that a lot of my students tend to ask about this essay, why have there been no great women artists? And so I want you to just pick one of those and answer it um, using one of the female artists I present in the slideshow as an example to help, um, to help you explain your answer to that question.